Thank you. Time back on. That's rough craft, big boy. Welcome to the Captain's Run, uh, sponsored by Zurich. It is the Deeds Podcast, formerly known as the Deeds Podcast. Uh, now, out with the old, um, no more Benny Gibson, although he is making an appearance at some point during the show. Uh, no more Clint Stanaway, uh, Katie Price, Tom Morris, we've tried them all. Um, we feel like this is going to be the one. Um, I'm going to have a numerous amount of guests uh, throughout, throughout the shows um, up here. In uh, Manly, in our hub, unfortunately, we only got a choice of 63 people, and 60 of them are quite boring. So we will rotate probably three. Um, my first guest was actually on the podcast last week, um, but he's making an appearance back on it again. Um, we'll get to him very, very soon. But um, the reason for the podcast change, uh, we are up here in a hub, um, and we do have a lot of spare time. Um, and as much as we all want to do our set shop practice in that spare time, you have to do something else away from football every now and then. And this hasn't consumed me too much that I've forgotten to do set shop practice, but um, I thought, why not get a deeper insight into um, the Melbourne Football Club, both past, present, um, and talk about all things demons, uh, not just on the field, although that would be a, a heavy topic, especially in the situation we're in now, one and three. Um, which we all know and we're all hoping uh, that that changes this, this week against the Suns but also a take on um, how these guys are handling the hub uh, both from a mental point of view um, and, a, and a physical performance point of view. Um, so I will get uh, to my first guest and he'll be a regular co-host uh, on the captain's run. Um, I always I just be if I ever say captain's call it's because that was my that's the one that I wanted captain's call but the producers have gone with captain's run but we'll say captain's run uh, and my first guest is uh, Angus Brayshaw so welcome Angus thanks for having me Max that was a great start uh, from you first one, take out of the blocks it was un, it was unscripted unscripted you've just gone and nailed it so um, thanks for having me it's a pleasure to be here thank you and obviously first first pick for mine yeah thank um, you noted. There's only 63 people here in this hub, um, and you needed to pick someone with charisma. I finally beaten track in the draft pick, so I'll, I'll take that. And, I, I uh, still would have taken McCartan though. Oh geez. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's probably fair. I'm not sure where they're hubbing though. So uh, by well, default, I'm I don't the first think McCartan's pick. in the competition anymore, is he? We'll have to check that one. Fact okay. check. We've got yeah. a fact checker somewhere. Yeah, I don't fact think he's, I think he's hubbing in Victoria. Um, We've con hard early. We have. We have. <laughs> So life in Manly, um, we're up here. We're in a we're in a five week, maybe longer hub. Mm. Um, I don't like the word hub. I like performance centre. Yeah, I think that's a good way to look at it. Um, which I I mean, so many people have been through this hub over the last sort of four or five weeks from interstate teams, and now it's Victoria's turn. Yep. Um, how have you adjusted to being hotel bound for the first four days uh, while sort of staring at this beautiful beach that we've got in our background? Yeah, it's it's weird. When we travel interstate, this is probably as long as we'd ever stay. So I still feel like I'm on an interstate trip and I'll be coming back in the next couple of days. Obviously, that's not the truth, uh, but that's how I'm sort of feeling at the moment. So I'm doing all right so far. But um, yeah, I mean, we've, how long we've got left? A few few weeks still to go. Still, Six weeks still about 28 days. Still about 28 days. And they've yeah. extended the uh, the quarantine back in Victoria. So I think I think we'll be right. Um, we've got a good... As you know, Max, I'm not talking to you about the quality of our group, but um, for the listeners at home, we've got a really connected group. So we've got uh, activities galore inside the hub, the performance centre. Um, and hopefully they'll let us out soon. So no more ping pong and um, you know card games and stuff. We'll actually be able to get outside because you're right we're sitting up here now and uh podcasts are a vi uh, are not a visual medium but we've got a beautiful view that um unfortunately we haven't been able to make the most of so i'm looking forward to getting out there and i normally did swim i normally didn't have one good word to say about sydney but now i love it they've let us in same um, same um it, it looks beautiful i haven't uh, seen too much i've been able to get a coffee and the coffee's great yeah good coffee. not as good as melbourne melbourne sure. obviously is known for its coffee, coffee but cousin. i've got to be careful because sydney have let us into their state so i don't want to say anything bad about um, the beautiful state of New South Wales. They probably could kick us out if we rub them the wrong way. I don't think the Premier of New South Wales is listening at the moment, but if we build up a viewership, then potentially this gets back. So we've got to be nice to them, I think. Well, and to build up a viewership, you know what you got to do. you got well, to go controversial. Early. Yeah. So let's let's start picking off some targets. <laughs> Maybe we'll leave New South Wales for later on in the podcast. Maybe the last week when we can get kicked sure. out. Sure, yeah, all right. Um, we are both very grateful um, to be able to continue our job. Um, we're very lucky to be able to still play AFL and keep the industry alive. And we understand that um, we have left behind a lot of people that are struggling. And 
Um, yeah, I have no complaints about being here in Manly, um, although we are in a hotel, but it will get a little bit easier for us as we mm. go on through the hub and it seems like it's just going to get harder for the people we've left back home. And um, We understand majority of our supporters are Victorian and um, hopefully this is a half an hour in their day, uh, in their week that they can look forward to and bring a little bit of joy. But um, we completely understand that we've got a role within this industry to keep it going and yeah. um, we'll be head down, bum up, making sure that we try and get some wins to bring some joy to footy supporters. Do you agree with that? Yeah, couldn't agree more. I think, um, you know, f- friends and family already uh, are sort of feeling the pinch at home on my end and I'm not sure about how I, you know your family's going. But, um, yeah, it's, got, it's not going to get a lot easier over the next six weeks. So if this is a small thing we can do, Max, I'm happy to do it. Well, easily, easily the biggest feeling I've felt since being here is more around shame uh, for what I've left back at home yeah. and having to be in Victoria. Um, not that I really had an option to bring my wife up here because she does work full time, but um, for me to be able to escape Victoria and be able to yeah. still still follow my dream and my passion of playing AFL football and, and, and my wife to be back home, probably locked up for six weeks. Yeah. Um, that's the feeling I've got with me in shame and um, I'm presuming a lot of people have similar feelings. So yeah. A bit um, guilty, a little bit guilty yeah, is uh, we correct. get we get to come up here and they're stuck down there sort of thing and why us? But it's the way it is, Max. And I think um you know we've just got to make the most of the situation because uh you know the time the clock keeps ticking. It doesn't wait for anyone. So if we uh, get too caught up on that, then uh, we'll get left behind. We got we got a game to play correct. this weekend. We do have one extreme negative up 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 here. I don't like to touch on the negatives, but. We are sharing a hotel with the Brisbane Lions. Yeah, and Steph Martin plays for the Brisbane Lions, used to play for Demons. He's very annoying. So. There's our first target. Go yeah. hard at him. In man. fact, I might get him on the podcast one day <laughs> if if that's allowed uh, for COVID rules. I'm not sure. But he is, I mean, he was one and a half metres away from me when we were passing by in the lift before. So I'm sure I can get him in the podcast. Yeah, sure. Uh, but we're sharing a hotel with the Lions. Any, yep. any interactions yet? Uh, yeah, I uh, bumped into uh, Lockie Neal earlier, and uh, he's mates with Andrew from Fremantle days. So I, uh, Andrew, my younger brother. Oh, yeah, your brothers play AFL, don't they? Yeah, I've got a couple of them. So um, I say good day to Lock. Uh, who else from Brisbane? Probably not. I mean, I'd say, I'm friendly. I'm a friendly guy, Max. Yeah. I'd yeah. say I'd say good day to anyone walking through the corridor. But uh, um, yeah, I mean, uh, well, they're our competition, aren't they? It's going to get a bit awkward at some points especially I think for you and Steph because wasn't he the premier ruckman at Melbourne for a while and then you were sort of his understudy well what happened um, in 2011 I was playing VFL reserves um, which which was a great standard of competition sure um, and Mark Jamar hurt his knee in the AFL and Jake Spencer hurt his knee in the VFL yep. and Paul Johnson hurt his knee in the VFL all in the same week so three ruckmen went down um, so I made a late grab VFL ones the next week. Steph was playing AFL. Yep. And then me and Steph became a partnership for four weeks. Wow. And then Jamar came back and um, I went back down and did my time in the VFL. But um, no, I got along with Steph. Great guns. Very, very close friend of mine. Um, looking forward to potentially getting a coffee with him if allowed. Um, you spoke about Andrew and Hamish. Yes, I did. Um, I'm not sure if you spoke about Hamish, but you definitely spoke about Andrew. Well, um, yes, I, I mentioned Andrew by name. Yes. Uh, They've both been in the hub. They have, yeah. Uh, the and they're both at the end of the hub, and they're both probably, as a team point of view, not got what they wanted out mm. of the hub in terms of wins. Um, have they spoken to you in terms of what worked, what didn't work, and how we should go about ours? Yeah, I speak. Uh, I speak to them a fair bit. Yeah, well, that's that's because they're your brothers, really. Well, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah it is. Um, so I speak. I speak with them a bit. Uh, for those who don't think that's obvious, I just wanted to explain that. And um, it's interesting from a you know, a hub point of view, how two different teams, obviously, um, the way they've gone about it's been really different. And I'm not going to go into details, but, uh, you know, the, there's the potential for some teams to, or well, some groups to uh, just, you know, say we're up in a hub, uh, performance centre, if you will, Max, and we're here, we're just going to have a holiday and kick back and take it easy. And then there's, I think, you know, the potential to go too far the other way and uh, over schedule everything and, um, I'm not saying that they were either end of that extremes, but um, it's just interesting hearing them reflect on it. And I think that, um, you know, it's going to be important to find a middle ground because whilst, you know, we are, it's a beautiful, beautiful spot we're in and, um, you know, it's, it's a bit of a, we're, we're, we're not at home per se. Um, we're still up here to work. So, so I think there's a bit of a balance to find. And um, I think personally have taken away a few things from both their experiences, but uh, they, they they enjoyed it overall, to be honest. They're both young and both love 
footy and uh, they, they, left, they lifted the golf restrictions early so they're both keen golfers and were able to get out and have a hit. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm not sure when they head back, but I think it's pretty soon. Uh, yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, I think the, the most important thing, if you're looking at the experience, is how the team performed. And I, as you said, I don't think either um, probably got what they wanted out of it. So um, yeah, hopefully we can I can take a few things from both of their experiences and uh, and get some get some improvement from our team. Yeah, ideally um, that answer's too long. Um, just going forward. Yep. with your answers um, this is a half an hour to 35 minute podcast sure um, and we've got a lot of things planned um, including calling your mum um, at some point in this podcast uh, there's a yeah, question okay. that I really want to ask her sure um, that's been on my mind a lot mm-hmm. uh, ever since the intra club that we played um, at the MCG instead of playing the Bombers yep um, I think you have a feeling where we're going with that but yeah we'll, I do we'll call her a little bit later on the show um, there's two things that and when someone says Angus Brayshaw, well, what does he love? What does he love doing? That po- really pops up in my mind. Sure. Um, one's your love of wine, yep. um, which I have a strong passion for. Um, also have a wine bar, East End Wine Bar, Camwell Road. East, Cam- Camwell Road um, currently East. closed for the next six weeks. You're um, still doing Uber Eats type setup? Uh, Uber Eats takes way too much of a divot, so um, <laughs> they're not going to sponsor this podcast now. But um, no, you just go in. Uh, get a pizza on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and a wine bar. For that's takeaway. great. You can t- so you're allowed to go in to East End and take away. Still. You're allowed to take away, oh, which geez. is good. Well, yes. why, you, I'd be doing that if I was still in Melbourne, I reckon. Um, so your love of wine, as, yes, we, as we're saying, and also your love of Ed Langdon lingers. Um, yeah, which are two things that are quite prominent. Yeah. Um, so explain to me uh, one as short as you can about wine, because we can both yep. turn this podcast into a four-hour wine podcast. Yeah. And then two langers. I understand you played footy with from the Dragons. Yes, yes, yes. Well, it's your podcast, Max. I don't want to step on your toes. So you I already will, have. So. I will keep it short. Um, the wine, the love of wine came about as the footy culture, as you know, you come in and everyone, you know, after a you know, game goes out for a you know, meal and a, has a beer. And I was never a beer guy. So I quickly found a, a much more uh, match, better match made in heaven from, from a wine perspective. And it's sort of grown from there. Which, um, which is, you know, which is, and here I am, five, yep. six years later. And as for, um, as for Lingers. Lingers, yep. Well, that's funny because I, um, this, if you'll let me have yeah. a bit of time here. Um, I'm happy to. Lingers, I remember Lingers, I would have first come across him when we were 14 and 15. And we sort of were mates throughout that first uh, 14, 18 sort of Sandringham Dragons program. And if you've met a more stereotypical Melbourne, grammar, Melbourne grammarian, I'd like to meet him because Lingers had the man bun, he had the white button up Ralph Lauren, the rolled up jeans, the RM Williams boot, and was just, you know. Had never left the city of Stonington. He didn't know what, you know, he didn't, he'd never been to Bayside because no. he turned his nose up at Bayside. Yeah. He, the city was, he, he's happy in Turak. Even um, even Bandura was a bit. Hey, you know, I don't know what, he doesn't know what Bandura is. He's got a beautiful cover drive from, from playing, you know, 10 years at Turak Cricket Club, and he's, um, yeah, he's very much a, he's a, I know exactly who Lingers is. Yeah. Then he goes to Fremantle. And five years later, six years later, he comes back to Melbourne and he's got a whole different outlook on life, which it, it really amuses me because... Yeah. Drinks herbal teas. Drinks herbal teas, uses keep cups constantly, yeah. um, is a surfer, like a bit of a hippie, a bit of an indie, listens to um, Sticky Fingers yeah. flat out yeah. and has just completely changed who he really is. He's been is. seven times, I think, to he's, a Stinky Fingers he's, concert. He's been live to the Sticky Fingers band seven yeah, times. Which is, that's phenomenal. Front row, moshing it out. Even though deep down he rather was going to the senior school stage band. That's Mate, more him. He's so hard yeah. trying to change who he really is. And the sec- I called it. The second yeah. I saw him, I was like, Lingus, what the hell are you doing, mate? Yeah. And he and he has been fighting this battle. It's an uphill battle. Like, <laughs> trying to maintain this facade of who he's trying yeah. to be. And he's mo- he bought a joint in Fitzroy. Like, yeah. he's, what are you, who are you trying to kid, Lingus? Like, I'm, I see straight through it. So... Um, yeah, I, I, he's a great guy, and I've I love I've loved having him here. But I'm just slowly trying to bring out because it's okay to be who you really it are, is. Max. Yeah, correct. Why would you want to be someone you're not? It's too hard. So I'm trying to help him out, and uh, I'm having a bit of success. It's pretty funny. That was a comprehensive answer, and I'm glad I gave you the time for that. Thanks, man. Um, now our next segment, as uh, this is going to be quite hard, uh, obviously with two players to really get into the nitty gritty of the news. Sure. Um, so we are going to get um, our, our the podcast Melbourne's own favourite, Benny Gibson, just to give us a news update. We do have a sting for him, Angus, yep. but we haven't recorded it yet. So this is our live sting. Are we going to sing it? Um, yeah. I'll do my line and you do yours, yeah. okay? It's Benny Gibson. He's got the news right now. He's got the news. 
That is a great introduction, Max. Thanks for having me on after getting me sacked from inside Melbourne. No worries. <laughs> well, I've still got you on because obviously salary-wise, it's we've still a, got to pay. a so. sympathy job. It's yeah. a sympathy job. And I didn't get the headphone memo either, but um, we didn't actually have enough room in our cases to pack for everyone, but glad you should have gone. <laughs> uh, I'm not a journalist, so I don't have any real breaking news. I'll yep. try to give you some sort of insights um, and I'll try to keep it short because you've already gone over 15 minutes which was going to be the first half so of the show. I think the first episode is allowed to go 40. Can be a bit longer. Yeah. Let okay. us off the leash. All right. So first up, England won for 35 against West Indies overnight. It's phenomenal that cricket's been waiting this long and it rains on the first day in England. Yeah, it's not surprising. And either. they have a 140 kilo off spinner playing for the oh. West Indies. <laughs> the truck. All right, so the, the rest will be footy-based, but I thought okay. we'd throw one in yeah. there. It's relevant, live sports back uh, internationally. Yeah. Lockdown in Victoria, obviously the big news. According to Google, 437 cases in the past three days, which is why we're up here. I thought I'd raise the fact that the COVID tests in Sydney only go one nostril. Did you notice that? Yeah, I did oh. notice that. Although we had we had three um, young ladies uh, yeah. who were doing our testing. and Which one um, did you get? The two furthest away from the door... Um, we're, we're, we're quite generous, as generous as you could, but there was there was one that did a run up, um, and she <laughs> took a backswing right don't up your schnozzer. Mate. You don't have to explain that to me. I'm still <laughs> bleeding out of my right nostril. <laughs> She's like, I'm sorry about this, and then just proceeded to hack yeah, hackage. But it is a one nostril test. Yeah, the word did get around that that was happening. Neville Jetta offered to buy me lunch to take my spot in the line. I said that's not worth it for me, Nev. So. <laughs> that's the first time Nev's ever offered to buy anyone lunch. <laughs> Drive by, we love it. <laughs> Taking scalps here. So Get we've brought 33 players up to the hub, left 12 back in Melbourne. What was the uh, thought process behind that? Um, oh, obviously, it's a performance hub. Um, so we're trying to get, um, we're trying to win games. Uh, and the 33 people that were closest to playing a game to in, a, in a condensed group in a hub, um, we thought was the best option at the time. Looking, looking back on it now, um, with everything that's happened in Victoria, I do feel I would like to be around that whole group and... Um, but it's a balance that we've got going and we're making sure we've got guys like Matty Egan, um, our doctor Zeeshan, um, our number one physio and Joel Ames are all back in Melbourne and they're handling that group. And from all reports, that group's um, trained really well this week. Um, it's going to get harder and harder for them with restrictions in Victoria, but hopefully there might be a way they might be able to come up at some point. With those restrictions, six weeks of lockdown in Victoria. Sounds like we could possibly be here longer than the 32 days. The word is they might start cramming games in. What are your thoughts on playing potentially twice a week? Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan um, personally from watching sports all over the world. Um, I know ours is probably a little bit more bruising in the way we play in terms of we run the same as a lot of sports, but we also have the contact um, and therefore can take longer to recover. But watching soccer and NFL, well, not NFL, soccer and NBA, um, mainly, they, they they back up sports on a Wednesday a lot. And to be able to play a feature game against Essendon, potentially, um, for our catch-up game um, in the middle of the week, prime time on a Wednesday night at 7.30, it sort of appeals to me. Um, and I think that would override the soreness I feel in my body to get up for such a peak game. Angus, you similar opinion? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, Burgess as well, coming from a soccer background, uh, He's got a heap of expertise in getting guys back up over a short uh, turnaround, so I'd, I'd be happy to. And it's like, you know, the carnivals back in the day we used to play, so um, we've all done it before. And Admittedly, it's probably a little bit harder than under 12s footy, but um, I'm sure we'd find a way. Now, no real surprises here. The VFL season has officially been cancelled. Casey Demons withdrew last week, but that's probably no major surprise. The grand final's always a talking point. Could potentially be on the move. What are your thoughts on playing it in Sydney, perhaps? if you're lucky, lucky enough to play in it? Uh, yes, uh, I would play a grand final absolutely anywhere. Um, the MCG obviously has it for a long time. I'm an MCC member, so I'm a little bit biased around the MCG. Um, so I would like it there, but I understand football industry needs to keep going no matter what. Um, so I'd be open to playing it in different places, but I'm no logic around that answer because I do understand there is a long contract with the MCG and uh, ideally it would be played there. As far as club news goes, injury update, Charlie Spargo rolled his ankle in the practice match last weekend. Nothing else too major. Jonesy missed that practice match with a bit of soreness, but he should be right if selected this weekend. Now, touching on that practice match, I'm sure by the time people listen to this podcast, the teams will have been announced, but we got Wiedemann in good form, Benel in good form, Jetta performing. Um, a few names really pushing their case, aren't they? It, it, it's, I mean, you have to have some sort of inside knowledge to be able to run those three names. It just makes me think that 
you're covering yourself because you reckon those three names are going to come up. That's why you dropped three I in particular. I had a phone call with Matty Egan on yeah, uh, Tuesday. Okay. He said they were the standouts. Okay, okay. So I, I have no idea as well at the moment. In fact, I think Hamish Brayshaw could be a chance at West Coast as well. We don't know at the moment. Well, no one knows. Um, Who knows anything? So he's a little bit nervous over there. But yes, Sammy's, Sammy's been good. It looks like we might need another tall forward. So hopefully he can come in. Um, Harley, Neville, Nathan have all reacted really well to getting dropped like Michael Hibbard did and Hibbard's come on and got probably two best dons in a row although Angus thought he was pretty good against Geelong but uh, Did I? Yeah, you said so I think Did I? Yeah Can't remember that I don't um, think so So hopefully these names can come in at some point Now, just lastly we've got to touch on Gold Coast They've been unchanged the last two weeks so they've got a really solid squad together obviously Matt Rowe out injured but they've got some good young kids that we're certainly going to have to watch aren't don't they? Yeah, they play a brutal bar- uh, brand of footy, um, especially around the midfield. And we felt that last time we played them and Marty Hall kicked the winner with seconds to go. But no, it was Tommy Mack hit yeah. the post. The oh, yeah, that's right. Marty Hall got us back in it. Yeah, that. he kicked um, the snag, then Tommy hit the post. Good little celebration away. from Marty Hall too. Yes, it was. Um, he hasn't kicked a goal since. Um, <laughs> Haven't played many games since. No, yes. Um, I, uh, this is good wax from us. I like it. <laughs> I like it. Um, yeah, look... Gold Coast, they just love contested ball. They love it in the contest. They love little their clearance wins. Um, they've got some stars up forward now with, with, with King and Sammy Day duking them. Um, Jared Witt's my opponent, uh, reigning best and fairest winner for the Suns. One and of the most underrated ruckmen in the comp, probably. Yeah, I, I, I do not like coming up against him. He's taller than me and stronger than me, which is very rare um, in this game. Oh, a lot are stronger than me, but not many are taller than me. Um, so it's a nice little battle in the midfield as well. Yeah. We've got Tuk, Tuk Miller in there. Obviously, Matty Rao not there. Um, would have been interesting telling Jack Viney that he has to tag Matty Rao. But, um, that would have been it, very interesting. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Oh, that's, well. That's time. about it for, for my news. Do you think that was enough? That was good. Um, we might have to reduce your salary potentially if that's all you bring in. But I like that. Not much to take off it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Gibbo. Uh, we'll be back after this little break. Thanks to our co-principal partner and podcast sponsor, Zurich Insurance. For over 100 years, they've been insuring the people and things you truly love. And just like you, they truly love footy and they truly love the Ds. Okay, we're back to the captain's run. Uh, sponsored by Zurich. That's the second plug, probably the last. Actually, I might chuck them in at the end because they are a wonderful major sponsor for the football club. Um, and I'll probably chuck in East End as well at some point, Angus. Um, I mentioned at the start of the show that uh, there's a couple of questions I had to ask your mum. Yep. Uh, we do have her on the line. Do you want to introduce your mum to the, to the, to the Demons podcast? Yeah, uh, of course. I'd love to. Uh, welcome, Deborah. Thanks, Angus. <laughs> it's good to have you. How are you? Very well. Now, Deborah, uh, hello as well from, from, yeah, from Max. Hi, Max. Um, I do have my, my one major question. There's a couple of questions we'll ask. Well, my one major question is, as you know, we weren't able to play Essendon due to a COVID scandal with Connor McKenna, um, and that game got postponed. So we ended up playing a scratch match on the MCG, um, where Simon actually described it, uh, Goody, described it as a proper match. Let's take it as if it's a proper game, and we'll go full on um, and try and get the most out of it. Now, I understand Angus wears a helmet uh, due to concussion-related issues throughout uh-huh. his career, and it was your advice to potentially wear the helmet? Uh-huh. Uh, he chose not to wear the helmet for that scratch match um, that was told by Goody that it was basically a full-on game. I just want your thoughts on that. Uh, well, I did pick that up, actually. I had a look at some photos and images of the uh, of the game and I saw that there was a helmetless Angus. <laughs> and I, Angus, you actually told your mother a porky pie because I said, why weren't you wearing your helmet? And you said... You just had temporarily lost it and someone got it and you wore it after the game. Is that not true, Angus? <laughs> no, nah, well, uh, look. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Your <laughs> yeah, I might have, but that's... Because, yeah, so the way, I, the way I view it, and thanks for asking me, Max, about my opinion, uh, yeah. is that it's, it's not a real game until I'm playing an opposition who will take my head off if given the opportunity. I'd like to hope that if I'm backing into a pack, uh, you wouldn't just line me up and take my head off and or just you know put a knee into my back or do something like that. That's my reasoning, Deborah. So yes, I may have told you a little fib, but um, just from a, that, mm. that's, that's where my, okay. that's where my head's at. You would have seen a lot of photos of me that day because I had the ball on a string. But um, as for the helmet stuff, I, I put it on the second where we started playing the game next week against was it Geelong. So yes. Um, yes. you don't have to worry. I'm all right. De- okay. Deborah, just just next time next time that happens, what what do you want from me? Would you like me to go get the helmet and make sure he puts it on? 
as the leader of the team, yes, that's, I'd really like that. Okay, beautiful. I'll, uh, I'll, 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 I'll write that down. That would be real leadership. <laughs> um, Deborah, we're obviously uh, going back into another six-week hub, and I've lived with you and and dad for which is it would be going on 21 years and neither of you are technically inclined technologically inclined so how are you going to go with um t- you're a school oh teacher by trade how are you going to go zooming a, a zoom expert don't undersell your mother well i, I remember a lot of times uh, i did i did um work way around microsoft teams it's teaching online so yep. i'm actually upskilling myself upskilling well because i can remember I'm for upskilling. i can remember for 20 20 odd years can I, can Angus or Hamish or Andrew or William fix the TV? And by fix, you mean turn on or <laughs> or get it to Foxtel? That's or... not true, is it, Deb? <laughs> yeah. No, absolutely. No. <laughs> Angus, you're getting into a very bad track record of not telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got one more, Deb, and then we'll let you get one back more. to your busy, yeah. isolating life at the moment. Um, three AFL sons, and they're all in hubs, including potentially, yeah. I'm not sure if you say Luke Jackson and Trent Rivers are also your sons. Uh, as yes, they, as they, you are the host mother. That means five sons in hubs. Uh, how are you handling this? Ah, uh, look. Last time you, um, we went to lockdown, we actually had Andrew come over from Perth and stay with us. So when Luke and Trent were on the west coast, we, we, we had at least had one, one son. And now it's going to be nobody. It's going to be very. Yeah, very, very quiet in the Brochel household for a change. Well, I think I might like it. Well, I remember when uh, I left and Hamish and Andrew got drafted, you went about two weeks before you wanted to punch sticks in the face. So <laughs> we might have to sort oh, someone out for you. Angus, that's three strikes. <laughs> uh, three strikes on Three strikes on around. Huh? All right. Thank you so much for joining us, Deb. No worries. Okay, see, <laughs> see you later. Angus. See you, Mum. Bye. Bye. All right, that was that was Deb. Um, she told me a few things I didn't think she was going to say. She says you're a liar, Angus, um, and we probably got to address that at a later date. Yeah, let's let's um, leave it for a different date. Yeah, we got another segment. Uh, this segment I think is going to be one of my more favourite ones. Um, we're going to call a random number in my phone that is a past player of the football club. Um, and I do have a fair few obscure people that have played for the Melbourne Football Club. Um, and the first number we have got has got us all the way down to Tasmania and no fans, it's not Jeremy Howe, unfortunately. Uh, we have got Mr. Colin Garland. How are you, Colin? I'm going very well, Max. Thank you. Um, G'day, Cole. Yeah, li- li- living the dream, Danny, mate. Living the dream. That is good. Is there is there any sort of restrictions down in Tasmania at the moment or you just can't come to um, civilization in Australia? <laughs> Well, how ironic is this? 12 years of Tassie jokes from you Melbourne uh, D-heads and suddenly we can do anything we want down here and you guys have to flee the state just to be able to walk down the street for a coffee. So, um, no, we're laughing down here, mate. Um, it's beautiful and sunny. It's I think it's two degrees. Um, the Gorgeous. sun's out. Um, yep. Yeah, I haven't felt my fingers in a month, but yeah, it's good. You can, do, um, you can do anything you want, but can you play football? Is football happening in Tasmania? We are kicking off on Saturday, so... Wow. Um, yeah, local leagues are up and about, so yeah, kicking off on Saturday. Um, you can't get paid for the first four weeks, so um, I'm a bit sore for the first month. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm up and ready to go. <laughs> they, do, they do call your pockets, Garland, for a reason. Um, who, are, who, are you, who are you playing for? Uh, I'm just playing for a very local team down here called um, Dosa, so... Um, yeah, see how I go. I played in the state league last year, but I was a bit old by the end of it, so um, couldn't really move. So, yeah, taking it a bit easier this year. Um, okay. And then my last hard-hitting question about Tasmanian football uh, is, obviously, you're a very passionate Tasmanian. Um, is there or should there be a team in Tasmania over the next couple of years, and will you be involved in, in that team? <laughs> Um, well, what is this? What am I talking on? Does this go to the general public? Um, this goes uh, to the Demons podcast. You can probably say whatever you want, really. Right. I, I don't think there should be, and I don't think there will be. So, yeah. there oh, you go. Oh, that's some honest feedback. Especially feed, with COVID, you guys have stuffed everything. You've lost all the money in the game. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> we heard of the affair. C. Garland has blamed Melbourne for not having a team in Tasmania. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the players have got too much for too long. So, um, <laughs> yeah, you've taken all the money out of the game, and now we're stuffed. How's your knee, Cole? Uh, that's a hot topic as well. We've, we know that Gorney's... Or, uh, that's the only thing Gorney talks about these days is how he had a few knee ricos. So, I heard you had a bad knee, and how's that going? 
Mate, they actually aren't that bad. Like, seriously, <laughs> you walk out you, of the basically operating room these days from a knee. So, no, the navicular was much worse, mate. The knee's fine. Um, just everything else. The older you get, the funny it is, you don't want to run 2Ks or 3Ks yeah. yep. and yep. stuff like that. So. so, you go to drastic no, excuses to not run them and go get your knee done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, the knee's fine. Thanks, Angus. No, so, that's good, mate. Um, good to hear. No, um, my body's actually pretty good at the moment. Uh, we do have a lot of uh, Demon fans who be listening to this who would remember C. Garland drafted back in 2007. Um, obviously, I didn't yep. get there till 2009, but you still hadn't said a word by then. Um, yep. you, were, you, were, you were drafted yep. with James Frawley and Ricky Pettard, who were um, they're mosquitoes. They're very loud. They buzz around. They bounce off walls, and you were quite the opposite. What was the what was the the demographic of the group and, and trying to and trying to be friends with James Frawley and Ricky Pettard. Tell us that first year. Uh, yeah, it was interesting, mate. Um, no, nah, I think that, I mean, you don't have to be dead to be stiff. So <laughs> getting was obviously uh, pretty, pretty tough. As you know, I mean, he's your, what, what is your brother-in-law or whatever he is now. So, um, <laughs> yep. no, it was an interesting dynamic. Um, those two guys are obviously good fellas. But, um, look, I just sat back and let them basically talk themselves out of the team. And I'd, I just kept my head down. So, yeah. Um, we also had Isaac Weitra, who played a couple of games as well. Oh, Weeters. Um, you lived with him, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. What's that? Did you live with him? No, Chipper did. Oh, and, Chipper um, did. Actually, they both went on holidays and came back and they'd left their tap on with the plug in the sink. <laughs> <laughs> and that was two weeks later. Um, and, yeah, oh, their whole God. house, they had to replace the whole carpet. Um, the fridge had blown up. Um, yeah, oh. absolute nightmare. But, I mean... How many times has Chipper done stuff like that, I uh, guess? Not the Chipper I know, surely. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now he's got a kid. <laughs> so, assuming they've got TVs down in Tassie Cole, uh, you've been watching much of the Ds, and if so, what are your thoughts on the current state of the team? We're interested. This is the hot scoop. Just be, 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 be mindful. <laughs> I, I do have a dump button. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I've gone. I went and got the new TV from last week. Yeah. Um, the other one, the remote chucked at it. Um, <laughs> No, I'm I'm real positive. I'm I, my theory is if we lose by 187 points to someone, then I'll start getting worried. Yeah, um, <laughs> yep. I was part of 186. So, you had you um, had 15 kicked on you that day, yeah. didn't you? What was that you just broke up a bit? I said you had 15 goals kicked on you that that that, that day down in Geelong, didn't you? I'll, I'll take 15. That's what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, I'll take that. um, that's a bit more positive than I thought. Um, no, uh, look, I just think we've. We've got a lot of new players. We just need a bit of time together. We've been quite unlucky. Yep, I like that. Um, so no, nah, no, nah, I'm I'm still behind us. I'm still behind us. All that's right, well, that's the the last questions I was going to ask you. Everyone that came on uh, is your favourite player uh, currently at the D's. Who is my favourite player at the D's? Mm. Um, you got to you got to quickly bring oh, it up on Wikipedia. Company. <laughs> yep. Uh, Stephen May probably. Stephen May, oh, you've always I, been I a backman, yeah. But anyway, that's yeah. all good. He, he plays like a poor man's cold goal, and so I can see why you like him. <laughs> yeah, good. And last, our last question before we let you go, Colin, to whatever you're doing in Tassie restrictions, um, do you still yeah. go for the for the mighty D's? Uh, well, of course, yeah. of course. But yeah. when you're a tie boys, you'll find that you um, you generally watch the blokes you know. A little bit more, and obviously I know that all people on the D's, but of course it's. Um, I would love to see you guys have some success, success in the next couple of years. But um, I also support Lyndon Dunn, but he, I yep. mean, he never gets a game, so it's hard yep. to support someone that doesn't play. Yeah, yeah that, um, I completely agree with you. Yeah, yeah no, nah, I'm a big D's fan. Angus, get on the ground a little bit more, mate. Um, Thanks, Cole. I'm not sure what's going on there, um, but no, nah, I'm a big fan, and I always tip. He's always put some money on you on sports, but. I mean, yeah. hasn't paid off yet, but yeah. anyway. I don't think we're allowed to talk about that, but thank you, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you when you really listen to this, the last three minutes might not be in it. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> thanks thanks for taking the call. No worries, guys. Enjoy the Sydney. See, Bye. see you, mate. That was C. Garland. Um, not sure if we'll run with everything he said, um, but, yeah, he was. it's obviously very good. Colin played 141 games to the Ds, finished... Second in the best and fairest. I'm not sure what year. Should have looked at my stats. I'm going to take a guess of 2015, but it could have been later or earlier. Um, earlier, earlier. And unfortunately, Enrico um, ended his time at D's and he then had to go back home for personal reasons, but seems very happy in Tasmania and obviously still a Demon supporter. Which we love.
All right, that was that was C. That was C. Garland. Um, that was a great chat. Our last segment, uh, and this is almost my most favourite segment, is we get to talk to the Melbourne supporters. Yeah. Um, the old podcast, the old Benny Gibson stale podcast. Did the Facebook chat, which I think was a bit. You could hide behind a keyboard. Exactly. Um, let's bring them into the mix. Let's, let's bring them in and let's let, let's, let's, let's hear up. their voice Absolutely. and let's actually talk to the supporters. Um, so a tweet went out um, and the and the question was just a Max Gorn memory. Say the best Max Gorn memory because obviously it's the captain's run, my podcast. It's and, your podcast. Yeah, so, I mean, it won't all be Max Gorn-centric questions, but the first one was. Um, and we do have someone who, who answered that question. We got, we got James Plunkett. Uh, Jimmy, you there? Yeah, I'm here, Max. Thanks for having me. No worries. You had... Uh, Sorry, hang on. James Plunkett? Yes. So do you, are you aware that we also have a James Plunkett for the people out in the world who aren't at the Melbourne Football Club? We've got a James Plunkett at our club as well. It's not the same guy. Oh, uh, do we? Yeah, well, yeah. So no, it's not... You're, you're not the James Plunkett that's currently in Sydney. No, I'm not. No, but I, uh, <laughs> I do enjoy running with it when uh, the best and fairest videos go up. <laughs> I do, I do uh, run a good Snapchat of that. That's, that's good. Do you, know, do you know that he was a mediocre half backman for Carlton in the 1990s? <laughs> And the, and the Bulldogs as well, was Yeah, it? Bulldogs. Oh, geez, you, you, are, you, are, you are schooled up. You are schooled up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jim. Yeah, what's, no, well aware. What's your, what's your memory? Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was uh, early on in your career, and I, uh, I tweeted you. I, I didn't have many followers at the time, or I don't think you did either, actually, Maxie. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, I just thought I'd get around you. You were my favourite player early, and then uh, we obviously had the big rush in playing, so you, and you were injured a fair bit early, and then... Uh, I thought I'd get around you, and, and you yep. did follow me back, so I was, I was pretty wrapped. So, oh, hang, on, hang on a second, Jim. Now hang on, Jim. Uh, Jim, 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 hang on. So the sort of bi- jumped to greater heights. You've, you've flicked me off. No! <laughs> the big Maxi Gorn's unfollowed you. Yeah, so, probably <laughs> due to my dribble on Twitter as well, but that's that's a different story. So what's the favourite memory, him following you or him unfollowing you? Probably the favourite memory would be him following me. Yeah. So what do you and reckon? my least favourite memory would be the unfollow. Jeez, yeah, that's a tough right. one. When did, when did I unfollow, just out of curiosity? I only f- when I uh, went on to m- to make the uh, tweet, I thought I'd double check, and yep. yeah, no, no longer following. Oh, so, true. Well, I actually, I actually, I can go uh, groundbreaking news here. I actually did it three days ago. Sorry, big fella. <laughs> oh, there you go. Jeez, he so, remember it as well. So yeah. what was it? Was I it actually big- remember pressing the unfollow button. <laughs> <laughs> Is that because you're now a two-time All Australian? No, or? no, no. Well, three times, so that's <laughs> poor from you, Angus. But what I'm what I'm trying to do while I'm up in Manly uh, is I'm trying to get out of this football bubble and embrace what Manly has for us. And James, you replied to a Super Footy uh, tweet, I think, and it just popped oh, up on my feed, t- and I said, "Well, I need to get you this can't. Super Footy off my feed." So I had to unfollow James at the time. That's a no, that is that's stiff. fair enough. You've I'll, been, I'll have to wear that. Jim, you've been triggered, LBW. It's it's <laughs> hooping down leg side. It's nowhere near the stumps, and I don't know if I'd accept that if I were you. So, no, we'll, is so, there any reviews left? Can I uh, get a review in? Send it straight up there. What I can do is I will follow you as soon as I get back to Melbourne. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll make sure I'll keep it to your word then. Yeah, um, please do. Uh, yes, uh, so you're a Melbourne supporter, I understand. Uh, tell us about your Absolutely. love. Tell us about your love for the D's. Uh, well, I've, obviously, I've been a supporter my whole life. I think I've been a member nearly 20 years. So, yep. Um, yeah, love the club. Um, yeah, be, through thick and thin, I've, uh, we've followed them as a family and yep. um, as a we go. We're MCC members and we go to the footy every week when we can. Obviously, can't at the moment uh, as a group of mates and uh, as a family. So, yeah. um, the Melbourne Footy Club means a lot. It's um, it's always there and it's up and down. Doesn't matter. We're we're always there to support. So yeah, massive love for the D's. Yeah, we we understand that and we love um, hearing from our supporters because it, it it does drive us. Yeah. Um, and the fact that we can't play at the G in front of a, a full MCC, um, ten, the other side of the oval doesn't tend to be full, but the MCC is <laughs> definitely packed. Um, yeah, we're missing that as well. So um, hopefully, when COVID's all over, we can um, potentially follow you back, follow you back, <laughs> <laughs> and get and get you to the game. Uh, we do have we do have some trivia to finish. Uh, Jim. Okay. Um, so there's five questions. If you get five right, you'll get a hundred dollar voucher to the Sporting Globe. Obviously, you'll have to use that post COVID. Um, yeah, that's right. If you I get can, four, can save it up. if you get four right, you'll get eighty. If you get three right, you'll get sixty, and so on, so you, on and so right. forth. If you get you know zero, if you get zero right, you have to buy me and Angus dinner at the Sporting Globe. 
I'm fine with me. Yep, that's fine he with might, you. He might tank it now and then give zero <laughs> <a sec. laughs> All right. So first question. What city did Braden Proust come from? Jeez, that's a uh, Is it Townsville? Wow, one from one. One from I knew we had a good supporter yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going for it. He's going for the top. So question number two is how many sets of brothers do we have at the Melbourne Football Club? And I, I need some names. Oh, sets of brothers. They're, they're both, uh, they're, they're, well, they're both play for the Ds. Yeah, they're yeah, both play. I'm going to go with two sets of brothers. Yep. Yep, and the names. That's correct, and I need uh, names. Tom and Oscar McDonald. Yep. Yep. And Josh and Corey Wagner. Wow, Dang. he's two from two. He's two All from right. two. All right. The this guys one. at the Sporting Globe are here and they're worried. They are yeah. worried. <laughs> they're twitching in their seats. <laughs> this one's a toughie though. So excluding the Wagners and the McDonald's, how many other players on the list have brothers in the AFL? Now you can take your time Ooh. on this one. This one's a toughie. This um, one's this, one, this one's tough. One one obviously just ask the question. Just yeah, well, there. exactly. Yeah. So Brayshaws. Yep. And then Ah uh, God. How about we give there's five. So I'm there's one five. of five. five. Yeah, there's five. Jeez, I probably should know this. This is pretty poor. We'll give we'll give you a, we'll give um, you a, oh, Jonesy is one. Jonesy, of the there Jones. we go. There's yep. two. We'll give you a clue. Um one of them has a twin brother at Geelong. Oh, uh, Cole Jasney, yeah. Yep. One of them has a brother at Western Bulldogs. Oh, yep, Dunkley, Kyle's brother. Uh, you're getting Josh. it now. And one of them uh, is a hippie who uh, thinks that keep cuts oh, are the yeah. way of the future. <laughs> yeah, Ed Langdon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that hippie. He knew it as soon as <laughs> he said hippie. <laughs> Instantly. <laughs> Let's give him three from three. Yeah, All I right, that. fourth question. Which one of these players won a Rising Star nomination? Christian Salem, Harry Petty, James Strauss, Michael Evans, or Geordie Gisberts? <sighs> Jeez. Um, Salem, Petty, Strauss, Evans, Gisberts. I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with Strauss. Oh, oh, no, Gisbert. it was Geordie Gisberts. He won two, actually. Geordie Gisberts. Yeah. Um, and my last question, go. this can go... You're on 80 clams. You, yeah, you're, you're not going to... on 80 clams. This is yeah. going to be hard to get this, but my last question, who is my current favourite player at the Demons? Wow. Oh, jeez. So this could be anyone, really. Could be anyone. He's currently playing in the team. And it's not Max Gorn. I know that's what you pro- your head probably <laughs> your head probably goes there first because he that's the sort of way he rolls. But it's not. He hasn't picked himself. Can I get a hint? What, uh, what position he, yeah, does he play? He's a forward with good hands. So with it's not. To- so it's not Tom McDonald. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with the milkshake. Oh, Bailey Fritz does like milkshakes, oh, but it's okay. not him. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. Yeah, Bailey Fritz. All right, you're three from five, but who cares? You're five from five. We'll give you a $100 yeah, sporting glove voucher. You're yeah. a, You've been a good oh, sport. Thanks, you're a good man, it. and hopefully we'll see you at the G sometime soon. That'd be great. Good man, Jim. All righty. Thanks, thanks, thanks boys. Thanks for having me. All Thank right. you. That was uh, James Plunkett, namesake for uh, a, a staff member at our football club, which is... I can't believe that. Yeah, I, cannot, I didn't know there was two. That's um, crazy. I thought we'd... Because, you know, it, it wouldn't make sense to me if we just pulled Jimmy Plunkett from uh, the leading team side of the... Correct. And, and got him on a podcast. Yeah. Make, no he doesn't sense. deserve $100. He doesn't deserve it all. I wouldn't give him $100 all. If, it, if his life depended on <laughs> it. Man. Okay, that's too far. Um, no, I didn't mind it. Keep talking about Jimmy Plunkett's life. Thanks, mate. No, you're right. It's your podcast. I don't want to step on, <laughs> I don't want, don't want to step on your toes. All right, so that's... We've gone way over. Um, right. I will promise to condense this a bit more um, hopefully you've enjoyed it we tried to go and tell you um, the mindsets of footballers while we're up here in the hub uh, we also got some good feedback from Deb about the way Angus speaks to her in terms of lying um, and Max uh, unfollows people who care about him but that's yeah, alright and Colin Garland uh, hopefully we get some more past players that are all avid um, avid? yeah avid's a word that's avid, okay keep going avid demon supporters um, and yeah that's it that's, that's, that's the captain's run season one episode one thanks for having me thanks Gussie might see you in three weeks we'll see